so so high it's t is ctp more twin flame of course who else would it be um okay my nose i just was crying um yeah my hair is pretty funky at least through this camera and right back here in my head right behind my ears like ugh, hurts in a weird way it's like tight so it could be muscles um like i i, I don't know if i've ever said on this channel but i say all over my social media and videos is that i do my body first I don't go to another person, even though the whole medical community, I respect science and the medical community. However, they don't know my body like I know my body. They don't know your body like you know your body. So it's important for you to get to know your body and, um, and trust your, learn your intuition and learn that the universe will send you exactly what you need when you need it. Learn to trust yourself. Um, so the medical community is only physical they don't deal with your spiritual and your emotional mental your energy um i'm not just a physical body if it wasn't for my energy there would be no physical body this is my this is really this I could just cry um not because of this because I was crying before I started this video I watch Grey's Anatomy like I'm I watch it all the time I'm I don't know maybe on the third season or something like that so it's good that I have a lot of seasons to go You know, I might be further down, further on the fifth season. I don't know. I don't think so, though. But anyway, um, right after I met Steve and my twin flame, this this little tassel came on like some kind of bag that I got. Not a purse, but some kind of bag that came in. You know what I mean? Like something came in it or whatever that I bought. And I don't know. I just I just liked it. There's something about it. I put it on my water bottles when I was driving um, for Lyft. And, you know, I drove every night, like, 8 to 12 hours a night. That's a lot of miles. And that's not an exaggeration at all. Um, and it was at night, you know, anywhere from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. to seven, eight, six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning. All through Maryland, all through Baltimore City. As a woman, by myself. Woman is not less than, but there are certain things about a woman, you know. And especially about me and being a sexual abuse survivor and all that I've endured in my childhood and hating myself and being really um, invisible and, and not knowing self-love and self-care. That's amazing to think that for four years I did that. That's extraordinary. And that's my higher power. That's belief in my higher power. So, so, and that, that's a lot of things. That's being a mom and, and having, having young people to take care of and nobody else to help you and to do it for you. Their dad is an addict and he was not, he was toxic and not healthy. I thought he was going to kill us. At one point, when I lived in Baltimore, I fought really hard not to die and not to let my children die and to stay together. <laughs> it was really hard at times. I had to 
I had nothing. Like, nothing, nothing. The only thing I had was a vehicle. A van. A Toyota minivan. And that was stolen. So I had me and my two kids. And I had someone that seemed to hate us and wanted to destroy us. And that was their father. And I was in the city, which I wasn't used to. And I was in Liberty Heights and Garrison. We lived... Uh, wasn't used to that. I lived a very sheltered life when I lived in Baltimore. I lived in Violetville behind St. Agnes Hospital. And in, back in the late 70s and mid 70s and that early 70s. I was born in 67. And I lived in a very um, white neighborhood and very, I went to Catholic school. It was very sheltered. I mean, it was, there was a lot of domestic violence in my home. My dad was a rageaholic. Um, they, my parents hated each other and were divorced when I was two. My dad cheated on my mom. It was a whole, my mom was sexually abused by her father. Um, my grandmother was one of the love of my life and my grandfather, and I had to go over there all the time. And my grandfather had his own bedroom and he was, uh, terrorizing terrifying being but the whole family hailed him as the patriarch my grandmother had a boyfriend but and he never came to our house or anything but my grandmother would go and would take my mom and me you know boat fishing on her boyfriend's boat a lot on the weekends it was accepted it was discreet but everybody knew about it wasn't talked about it was just something that happened but on the holidays and during regular days my grandfather and my grandmother lived together but in separate bedrooms and my grandfather did these whatever things in secret but my grandmother and my mom were in denial so there was a whole play being done a whole make-believe and um it's it's still coming clear to me i'm 54 doesn't matter your age it's what you can handle I know it's very popular now to do drugs I mean to self-medicate and to take prescription drugs but I don't and I know there's a reason that I don't I know that it's important for me to be able to well, first of all, to control my own self and my own, you know, from doctors, from therapists. I'm in charge. This is my life. Um, I can't have therapists taking charge. I can't take have doctors taking charge. And um, and I can't have people. And I, and I think it's essential. I know it's essential that you let things come to you. You don't chase it. So I can't chase my healing. It comes to me when I can handle it. Memories come to me when I can handle it. I know that people get uncomfortable when I randomly cry, but it's not random. And I don't give a fuck. This is, this is my prison that I'm getting out of. And every part of my soul and my body and my mind is precious as an, and important. And I don't want to damage anything by not being ready. And you will damage when you're not ready. So the universe or my soul knows the perfect timing in the perfect way. And I trust in that. So it doesn't have to be a higher power. It doesn't have to be the universe. It doesn't have to be anything outside of myself. Source is in me and a part of my soul. And it's a part of yours too. So there doesn't have to, you can be your higher self. It can be your source energy that's in you, but that knows the way and you can trust in that. So that was a lot to talk about before I start talking about my twin flame journey. That full moon was very powerful last night. Actually, it was six o'clock this morning before I saw her because it was so cloudy here. But she was, you know, you don't have to see the moon. 
to, to feel her energy and to feel her power, to know that she's there. So it's a good time to cleanse and detox and purge some negative habits, some patterns, beliefs, whatever. And it's every 30 days. So every, so that's how we are as human beings. Things come to the surface and we release them at the moon energy. So it was very good for me last night. I love my twin flame so much. I can't even. More than any human being that I've ever known. More than anyone. And I'm starting to realize that. That's starting to come forth. Um, so I felt like I've always loved him since I since I met him physically. But this new love is coming forth that is terrifying so it must be coming forth because i'm i'm becoming safe for it that is really important at 11 18 on this video 11 minutes and 18 seconds that i start to talk about being safe it's just part of your healing that you become safe. It's part of nurturing yourself, being patient, being gentle, being kind. The more you forgive yourself and the more you let your, yourself love yourself unconditionally and you slow down and you become safe for yourself and you become safe for real love. You let it in. Very important. And that you let it just have its way. You just keep opening to it. You can feel your heart opening and it, it's like water. It's like a river going into every crevice. Very important. And I, and I, I feel really strongly about sex. Um, and about getting away from the negative. There's dark energies in the world. Um, that destroy and shred innocence and say and say sac sacronicity <laughs> I made that word up sacredness um you don't need your identity in sex and you don't need to be advertising your sexuality I don't mean that as in like your sexuality whether you're you know you can be sexy you can not be ashamed of sex but there's a sacredness and an honor and um, to sex. Uh, what I mean by that is holy. And it has a divine purpose that is beautiful and amazing. It, it, it's just not religious. It's not like you have to be um, like in missionary position or anything like crazy like that. You can have amazing fire, but only with your twin flame. I'm sorry, soulmates don't cut it. They weren't meant to cut it. They they weren't meant to be your... There's a difference between a soulmate and a twin flame. And soulmates, mm -mm, they're not... They don't have the fire that a twin flame has. They don't have the same divine purpose. So, sex with your twin flame is, supposed, is meant to be unique. It's me meant to be healing. It's meant to be... Um, it, it's for twin flames and it, it will never die between them and it will only get better and it's natural and it has to do with trust. It has to do with holding esteem for something, holding space for something. There are certain things, energy that is about love and, 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 and purpose and, and dignity. And that is honor, integrity, value so it doesn't have to do with your income or your where you live whether it is ghetto or poor or whether it is rich and bright and shiny it can be dirt it's it is an energy it is integrity it is it is courage it is strength it is dignity it is honor honor just willingness to be an honorable person and to honor people in your life. It's not perfection. It's not competition. It's not pressure. 
So I honor my twin flame and I'm committed to him and I'm committed to only having our sexual experience with him and no one else and honoring that that my soul and my heart and my body um it it's sort it, it, it I give it to him it is his it is his it's mine of course but it is his and the more I trust him the better our sex is the more I surrender to him and it is amazing and it is exclusive and it is sacred and it is the most beautiful healing thing. So I just want to, I want to say this whole multiple partners and doing it in front of people and pornography like I used to watch porn all the time, every day. Power off. Um, and so did my twin flame. I don't know if he does anymore. That's not my business. But, and I'm not putting making it a rule that I don't watch porn. But it actually hurts me now to watch it. Because I don't know why. It just hurts me. It's, it's not, it doesn't hurt me. We can do whatever we want, me and him, together to our, our bodies. But putting other people's sex with ours, no. That's just, ugh, yuck. It's just between me and him, and it is amazing and amazing and amazing. And so. Um, that's, I guess that's all I wanted to say. It's only going to get better. I'm only going to get better. I'm only going to get more healed. And my inner child is only going to get more free. And and it does it, it's going to look messy. And it's going to look zigzaggy. But it's unique to me. And it's, um, you know, going to make people uncomfortable at times when I'm, when I'm not what people want me to think that I should be. It doesn't matter. That is smashed. It is a my journey uh so yeah there's no cookie cutters it's your journey it's your healing it's your timing there's plenty of time there's no rush so yeah that's what i meant to say i love you guys like subscribe share Leave a comment if you want. So, um, yeah, there's more. I'm going to leave other things in my vlog. I'm going to leave other things on my TikTok. You're welcome to my TikTok. It's, um, I have two accounts. It's Energy Whisperer and Charissa Driggers too. Charissa, no H, Driggers, D-R-I-G-G-E-R-S. Um, I do energy readings and I connect with loved ones. Um, and it's amazing on my, on my TikTok live. And I don't have live yet on my energy whisperer, um, because I just started it and I don't have the followers, but I will. So love you guys.